So Vivian, I'm all over to you. How are you today? Are you okay? I'm very good. Lovely. And how old are you? Eight years old. Lovely. My Jeffrey is seven years old. Yeah. My I'm son. one year older than Yeah, him. and Jeffrey's goes to Sandhurst as well. <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah. So you're in year three at Sandhurst? No, I'm in year four. Oh, excuse me, of course you are, yes. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, well, over to you. You can go ahead and start me asking me questions when you're ready. Mm -hmm. So, so I've prepared these questions for you. It's about your job and your and leadership. My job and my... Leadership. Leadership, yes, yes. Thank you. So, first question. How did you start your career in politics? So, um, I start, so well, my first job wasn't in politics at all, okay? Oh. My first, yeah, I wasn't always going to become a politician. Okay. My very first job is I was doing admin work, working mm -hmm. in a court. And I really mm -hmm. liked that. That was really good. And then I went to university and I studied something called Sociology and Social Studies. Mm -hmm. But the reason I went there was because I wanted to become a social worker. And um, I wanted to help families that are experiencing poverty or any type of um, difficulty within their family network. And that could be to do with unemployment, could be health things, could be not like having enough money to pay your bills or to buy food. Anything really to help people to build up their own their family life. So then, um, so I also did what's called a diploma in social work, mm -hmm. and uh, I became a children and family social worker. Mm -hmm. And I really that is very much about helping children that um, uh, helping families that were finding it difficult to, to look after their children. And, um, and where children weren't being kept safe. Because you know, children are really important and we all have to keep children really safe. Did you know that? Uh-huh, yeah. And, and that you mustn't speak to strangers. Did you know that as well? I know. And that you're good girl. And your parents need to know where you are all the time and things like that. Yeah, like... So, yeah, go on. So it's like when, like, we are going to a party and and if I wanted to go to the bathroom, I had to ask my parents' permission first. Perfect, because they need to make sure that there's no one in there, and they need to make sure that they maybe even need to go with you, actually, just to make sure you're safe or to wait outside afterwards, okay? Okay. Good girl, well done. Sounds like you know how to keep yourself safe. So then I, be I kept on going up in, um, I get kept on getting promotion, which means then I became a more a senior social worker, then I became a manager, then I became head of a region and I kept on going up and up and up in my job because I believe in working hard and doing well. Do you work hard? Yes, very. Good girl. Good. Yeah, you try, just try your best. All you do is try your best. So I kept on doing my best and I went really fast. But then what I realised is that um, the people that make the law sometimes maybe don't understand enough what needs to be changed, or maybe they just haven't considered it. So I realised that changing local policy, which is the guidelines to how things are done, could need to be altered somewhat. So that started for me thinking about politics, because in politics you make local decisions locally. If you're in government, you make bigger decisions that affect the whole country, and you make international decisions which affect Europe and then affect the world. Anyway, I first became a local councillor, so I was locally involved in local politics in Lewisham, which is where we both lived. And then I um, uh, thought about becoming a member of Parliament or even going, uh, or being a, a, a member of the European Parliament. Okay, next question. What is your current role as a member of Parliament for Lewisham East? So um, my role is to represent my constituents. So my constituents are people that live in my constituency and that covers the area where we both live. 
So it's about listening to local issues and concerns that you want to raise with me. Those issues could be about education, could be about health, could be about um, community safety, could be about poverty. People write to me about these issues. I try and make changes uh, according um, to influence the government uh, to make changes to improve the lives of my constituents. Um, environment is a really big issue, which we're aware of an environmental crisis at the moment, which really means we need to keep our streets clean, we need to keep our air clean, we need to make sure we're recycling. Can you think of anything else we need to make sure we do? So, we don't use any cars because there will be pollution. Like you said, we need to have clean air, so maybe we can like do like an Earth Day, like we have to be kind to the planet, you can plant something in, in your garden, anywhere you want, and, Perfect. and, you, can, and you can walk as well, or ride Perfect. your bike, or ride a Perfect. scooter, or a bicycle. Good girl, you, you understand what it is to look after our environment. So that's one, of, that's one of the roles I do. I belong to a political party called the Labour Party mm -hmm. and our ideology is very much about equality and fairness and justice and respecting others. So mm -hmm. I very much push our, our Labour ideology and I stand behind our, our, our Labour virtues mm -hmm. and politics and mm -hmm. I believe that we should have a Labour Party in government. And I also work with the um, local authority, the local council and I have a, a push and pull influence on some of the local decision making that they make. But mm -hmm. primarily my role is in, in Parliament, being a national voice and mm -hmm. an international voice for mm -hmm. my uh, constituency. Okay, uh, third question. What can you teach young girls like me about leadership? Well, you seem to me like you are a, a leader yourself actually. Um, mm -hmm. because you are very well spoken and articulate so I mm -hmm. think one of the things about um, wanting to uh, uh, be a leader is to um, uh, to think about what it is you, you'd like to get involved in and what it is you'd like to do and then to be able to speak about that and to speak about it means that you need to maybe do a little bit of research to find out some information and you can ask your parents, you can ask your teachers, your older mm -hmm. brothers or sisters or aunts or cousins. And it's very important to talk about these things. So the first thing I would say is make sure you're talking to other people and getting lots of good advice. But speak to trusted adults, which means adults you already know. And I would also say to you, learn how to um, make sure that when you speak, people can hear what you're saying, not to have your hands in your face and um, and to make sure you lift your head up a little bit high and um, so that you can uh, be able to project your voice. Okay, the fourth question. What can we do for little kids to have voice, to have a voice in the community? In our community? Well, there's lots of different clubs and organisations mm -hmm. that um, children can go to. But because of the coronavirus, a lot of these have been put on hold, haven't they? Mm -hmm. So there's lots of opportunities within our school to have um, little uh, school conferences and lots of clubs and societies to have a voice. Now there is also the Lewisham um, Youth Club and people that also want to participate can really go to access the Lewisham Youth Club and activities mm -hmm. and that's a really good way to have your voice heard. Mm -hmm. Another way to have your voice heard is to write to your MP and to write to your local councillors and to write to the Mayor of Lewisham. And you can do that in the form of just writing a letter. You can mm -hmm. even send a short video. Um, or you could even do what's called a petition, which means if there's something you feel really strongly about in your local community, you write it down, what it is you'd like to change or mm -hmm. what you think needs to happen, and you take mm -hmm. it around to all your friends or to give it to your friends to give to their parents or give it to the school teachers and you can all write your names on it and then you send it in to your local elected representative and that is your uh, the mayor of Lucian, your local councillors for Capita mm -hmm. and your uh, MP. There's also one other person, well there's a few others, but you can also write to um, Sadiq Khan who is our London mayor mm -hmm. or to your London assembly members which is Linda Bell 
and we are in an election period at the moment, so you could be speaking to your parents about who are you going to vote for, yeah. and say to them, have a chat to them, who are you going to vote for? And who you vote for is who gets elected in to represent you in your local area. Okay. Fifth question. Do you think beauty pageants is a platform to develop good leadership, leadership skills at, and to have a voice in the community? So I think uh, uh, beauty pageants are lovely things for people to do that are interested in doing them. Um, I know that you have to perform a certain talent, don't you? You get to meet people from different areas, you have to speak on stage, you have to show that you are a person who is worthy um, to be um, uh, nominated for a prize. So I think there's lots of good skills that you can learn. And also um, uh, people from whatever age or whatever background or whatever gender mm -hmm. love dressing up and feeling nice and looking great. And I oh. think the majority of people like doing that. And my little girl loves putting on dresses and she loves putting on uh, party dresses. And even when we go into the park, she wants to wear a party dress. So mm -hmm. if she likes these things, let her wear them because it's fun. And I know I like wearing dresses and looking pretty as well, as much as I can, that is. <laughs> it's like a game what called, it's like a game called dress up. Yeah, yeah, she loves dressing up as well. I probably don't have her enough, haven't got her enough dressing up clothes. But she grows really quickly. Have you noticed that? That some of your pretty dresses don't fit you anymore. Can I you know. Find that? Yeah. Um, so it's so us as parents, we have to keep on buying these pretty things so that you can keep wearing them. <laughs> yeah. Is that a good idea? Yeah. yeah. I bet it is. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a what performance do you do in your pageant? What's your skill? Singing and gymnastics. Oh, lovely. Do you go to gymnastics class? Yeah. And also, okay. I do dancing. I'm practicing mm. dancing. Yeah. Wonderful. Sounds great. It sounds like you've got a lot of talents, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Question. Yeah, what, next question. What are the most common struggles of kids in terms of education and your advice for us to cope up well with the changes in our school and schedules due to the pandemic? Well, I think it's been quite difficult for some children during the lockdown uh -huh. when children had to stay at home a lot and their parents had to teach them. I think it's probably really challenging for parents as well because yeah. you're both not, your parents aren't used to doing all the teaching and you're not used to your parents really being the teachers as well as much yeah. as they have been. All right? Yeah. So that I think has been a bit challenging for every family, okay? Yeah. Because all of a sudden your parent turns into your teacher. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then you have to find your way around its learning and using the online things and that can be good and bad really yeah. um, so i think there's been some struggles for that and then children not being able to see their friends as well yeah and play with their friends yeah it's pretty that, sad yeah i think so and then not being able to go to your after school clubs and everything yeah. so i think you know it's been a bit challenging but children have really tried their best to cope well with these changes and I think children like you have done brilliantly. Yeah. You're trying your best to keep up with your schoolwork and to, and to um, cope with everything that's been happening. Yeah. So well done to you. Alright? Okay. Um, what are you any advice? I missed a bit of the question out. So, um, so I suppose the advice would be, because you're still having to social distance in school and yeah. I imagine that you're still washing your hands and you have to be careful. My yeah. advice would be just to try and keep to the guidelines, just like us big adults need to do. Yeah. And that is to keep the social distance in, yeah. washing your hands. Yeah, okay. that's a new rule because adults, adults and when you have to go to the hallway, 
if you're an adult, they have to wear a mask and some don't don't wear a mask because they forgot. Is that at school or is that just generally? It's at school. Oh, but then maybe school should have extra masks for um, teachers to wear if they've forgotten their masks. Yeah. Oh, but then some people can't wear masks for medical reasons. Yeah. But, they, but you don't always know that. It's not always obvious, do you know? Yeah. Anyway. Next question. How can we stop food poverty in our area? So, um, I read something that you have been really active in helping with uh, planting food preservation. And uh, I'm really um, proud of you for the way in which you and your family help other families to stand for yeah. a school that are struggling with food. Because when we're hungry, when we want food, we, we get this hungry feeling, don't we? When we think, yeah. In our, in our, yeah. And then we think, oh, what would I like to eat? But you see, some families and some children, when they get that hungry feeling, they don't have much choice or they don't have much to eat, and that's really sad. Yeah. So we, we all need to do a lot to help people to make sure they have enough food. So it's this, uh, your primary school is helping families by giving food. There's lots of food banks around. I started up a food bank in in, 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 in Whitefoot and Downham. Yeah, we've, and we've, we've read that. <laughs> Yeah, we've read that uh, that you uh, you've actually one of the directors of Whitefoot Lane Food Bank. Because uh, back in the, uh, last year, actually, we we were looking for for a food bank so that we can because obviously we, we don't have anything to do, etc. Um, yeah, so yeah. so and because her pageant requires her to do some uh, activities as well. So oh, we, we, we yeah. Yes. We, so what we did is we just thought of um, we started with uh, Sandhurst. Um, uh -huh. And yeah, and then um, we went, whilst we're browsing up the internet, we, we've seen your uh, the one in Whitefoot, but it's quite further away from obviously from yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, so, it's fine. Yeah, so we we did one. Um, we did some donation as well with uh, uh, Salvation Army instead. Perfect, perfect. So it looks like you've been doing a lot, really. So it looks like. Uh, Vivian, you've got really supportive mummy and daddy that help you to do yeah. these things. I hope you say thank you to them, do you? Do you thank them? Good girl, good girl. So, um, yeah, so you've been doing the Salvation Army and Santa. I yeah. think everybody needs to help our neighbours. We need to be a community where we look out for our neighbours and we help our neighbours so that we help our neighbours not to go hungry and to make sure they've got food and clothes. But the government also has a responsibility to um, uh, make decisions and to change legislation so it prevents people from falling into poverty. Yeah. So this means that people that are receiving universal credit, they need to make sure that they uh, receive the, uh, uh, enough money, that's one thing. They yeah. need to make sure that even when they have more than two children, they still get money. And they also uh, need to make sure that people don't need to wait too long before they get their money. So they shouldn't have to wait five weeks and I think they should have their money uh, uh, um, up, up front and then every every two weeks because people need money to buy food and to survive. Yeah. So these systems need to change and the government has a responsibility not to uh, allow people to fall into poverty and to have um, to suffer from hunger and starvation. Yeah. Okay. And what do you do? What do you advise or your tips to kids like me to create and make donations on our own little way? Yeah, so we can all make um, change and we can all, all help, you know? So there's, there's a few things you could do. Sometimes people want to give food and they want to help, but they don't know how. And children could make little flyers to say, mm -hmm. please donate food or please give. And then you could tell them where to go and who to give it to. So, and then you could put leaflets through your door with your family members. 
and that's one way to help. Another way to help what children often do, they really do at this school, is they do sponsors. They can do a sponsored walk for raise money, or a sponsor, you can even do a sponsored dance, or a sponsored gymnastics, or yeah, sponsored wow. singing. Yeah, and you could, instead of taking money from people, you could ask people to donate too. You know? So there's lots of little ways in which children can help to um, uh, 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 be creative and to help uh, people to donate towards people that need help from us. Because being neighbourly and uh, is all about being charitable as well and looking out for each other. Do you agree? Yeah, I do agree. Wonderful. Is that all your questions or do you have any more for me? Yeah, that's all the questions. Thank you. Well, thank you very much as well. And thank you for asking me all those wonderful questions. And I wish you all the best in your pageant. And I can see you're already a, a, a star and I'm sure you'll be absolutely fantastic. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> thank you very much. And we hope to see you as well soon, very soon. Uh, Definitely. Yeah, in the neighborhood. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Take care, Ram, and give my best to Nina as well. Yeah, okay, we will. And okay. Uh, yeah, regards to your family and keep safe as well. Thank keep you. Safe. You too. See you, Vivian. Bye bye. 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 See you, sweetheart.